Okay. Now our topic is acute glomerulonephritis. This is a very common disease in children. As you all know, uh, especially in the preschool age group, acute glomerulonephritis is the most common disease among the children. Now, what about the anatomy and physiology? Uh, we all know the kidneys, uh, kidneys are paired, reddish and bean shaped organs located in the posterior wall of the abdomen. The kidneys are located between the levels of the large thoracic and third lumbar vertebrae, a position where they are particularly protected by the 11th and 12th rib. The right kidney is slightly lower than that of the left because the liver occupies considerable space on the right side superior to the kidney. So uh, this is a very uh, important slide because the glomeruli that is you are seeing that it filters the kidney. The glomeruli are the filters of the kidney which filter the blood and make the urine. And you know there is efferent arterioles, there is a glomerulus, then there is efferent arterioles. After formation of the urine, the, uh, the urine passes in the proximal convoluted tubule. So uh, any uh, inflammation of the glomeruli resulting in glomerulonephritis. Acute glomerulonephritis is an immune-mediated inflammatory disease of the capillary loops in the renal glomeruli. As we have already shown you, that is the uh, that is the structure of the glomerulus, and the antigen-antibody complex deposited within the glomeruli resulting in glomerular injury, which is manifested as hematuria, oliguria, edema, and hypertension. So these are the features of acute glomerulonephritis. And the incidence is more common in the male. Most common, as already I have mentioned, at the early school age group, that is pre-school age group, with a peak incidence of six to seven years. Rare in children under two years of age. And it is overall responsible for two to four percent of pediatric admission in the hospital. It accounts about 90% of the renal disease in childhood. It varies, uh, prevalence varies by the nephrogenic, that is nephritogenic strain of streptococci and the likelihood of cross-infection. So what about the pathogenesis? Two main uh, pathogenesis are recognized. One is the position of the antigen-antibody complex in the glomeruli and deposition of the antibody in the glomerular basement membrane, which then reacts to the antigen in the basement membrane. So this is type three antigen antibody reaction, as you all know, and this is the type two antigen antibody reaction that occurs in this condition. And you, you are seeing, and this is a, uh, what about the structure of the glomerulus. That is, is efferent arterioles and efferent arterioles. There is a, uh, there is a glomerular capillaries and there is a capsular space. There is a Bowman capsules. And after a, a formation of the urine, it passes in the uh, proximal tubule. And this is also the uh, microscopic structure. And this is a very important filtering membrane. And from the blood, uh, that is the, in the glomerulus, the, the pores, that is pores is about 50 to 100 nano, nanometer, that is the inside, from the blood side, and this is basement membrane, and there is also the cleat membrane pore about five nanometer, that is in the urine side. And you are seeing that this, these are the pedicles as well as the protocytes. So the, the, uh, uh, the urine passes, that is the liquid portion passes from this and uh, crosses the basement membrane and then it also 
comes in the uh, um, uh, passes the slit membrane and then it passes in the Bowman's uh, capsule and then it uh, goes into the uh, proximal tubule. So, uh, what about the pathogenesis? The immune complex are removed through the host reticular endothelial system. All the immune complexes usually is removed by the reticular endothelial system of the um, even in the liver, kidney. And if there is the impaired ability of the same, results in deposition of the glomerular capillary wall. So it is deposited. Immune complex and antibody against glomerular antigen trigger injury by following mechanism. That is by the complement activation, fibrin deposition, platelet aggregation, and release of cytokines and free oxygen radicals. So this immune complex is deposited in the glomeruli, and uh, also this uh, uh, antigen also uh, antibody also uh, also merged with the basement membrane. So the and this antibody against the glomerular antigen triggers injury by this mechanism. And progression of the glomerular disease, persistent glomerular nephritis that worsen renal function is always accompanied by interstitial nephritis, renal fibrosis, and tubular atrophy. Most of the cases of glomerular nephritis usually, usually back to the normal state, but sometimes it progresses in this way. Now comes to the classification of the glomerular disorder. You all know there is a primary glomerular disease, glomerulopathy, secondary to the systemic disease. There are some hereditary disorders, also some miscellaneous causes there. So in the primary glomerular disease, uh, you will get minimal change disease, focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, membranous nephropathy, acute post-infectious glomerular nephritis. Membrano proliferative glomerulonephritis, RDA nephropathy, dense deposit disease, and C3 glomerulonephritis. These are the primary. And you know, in minimal chain disease and membranous nephropathy, they usually present with nephrotic syndrome. But in acute post infectious glomerulonephritis, they present with acute nephritis. IgA nephropathy is prevalent all of the world, it is more prevalent in the adult. Now, glomerulopathy is secondary to the systemic disease. Here comes that lupus nephritis, systemic lupus erythematosus, diabetic nephropathy, amyloidosis, amyloidosis, and glomerulopathy secondary to multiple myeloma, good posture syndrome. Microscopic polyangitis, glomerulometrosis with polyangitis, anisolanum perfura, bacterial endocarditis, and thrombotic microangiopathy. These are the secondary causes where the, this glomeruli is involved. And in hereditary disorder, you will get Alport syndrome and Fabry disease, podocyte bacilli diaphragm protein mutation. And in miscellaneous uh, causes, you will get malignancy, eclampsia, and also drugs, some drugs, the heavy metal like penicillamine. So uh, these are the conditions where you will get glomerulonephritis. So you see, this is the normal glomerulus, but there is focal segmental glomerulonephritis. sclerosis. You will get such type of picture in uh, microscopy. And also there is a focal necrotizing glomerulonephritis. You also get the membranous nephropathy. That is, you will see this membrane is thickened. And there is also crescentic glomerulonephritis. There is a crescent formation is there. Now you see, in case of circulating immune complex, cryoglobulinemia, serum sickness, and endocarditis. These deposit actually, uh, there is a deposition in the endothelium and resulting in antigen antibody deposition and uh, subsequent um, uh, 
complement activation and others. Endothelium is involved in a small vessel vasculitis. And in the glomerular, uh, glomerular basement membrane in good posture disease, both basement membrane of the renal system as well as the lung is involved in this good posture syndrome. And there is a membranous nephropathy. You will, you will get thickening of the membrane. And there is also formation of the podocytes. And there is antigen deposition, antigen antibody deposition or also deposit in the membrane that is in the SLE and also the in some infections. So what about the clinical pictures? The acute nephritic syndrome classically present with the following manifestation. That is patient is hypertensive. In urine there is hematuria. There is a RBC cast. There is subnephrotic proteinuria. Then there is a fluid retention. So you will get it. So these features is important. When a patient, when a patient you will see that especially in the children, they, uh, there is a oliguria, but patient is hypertensive, as well as there is hypertensive complication. Even there may be acute left ventricular failure, or there may be there may be also the encephalopathy, acute encephalopathy. But if you do the urine examination, you will get hematuria, and important is red cell cast. And there is a subnephrotic proteinuria, that is proteinuria in the nephritic range. We, when we are uh, telling nephritic range proteinuria, that is one to three gram per 24 hours. And there is also fluid retention, there is also puffiness of the face. And when you are doing the renal function test, that is the serum creatinine will be high and there is a reduction of the GFR. So you are, this is a very important slide, the spectrum of presentation, either in the nephrotic, uh, nephrotic presentation or is the nephritic range presentation. And you are seeing in, in the nephritic range uh, presentation, the mechanism is inflammation and reactive cell proliferation. And there is also break in the glomerular basement membrane. And there is also some recent formation. What are the causes? As already we have mentioned, that is anti-glomerular basement membrane disease can occur. That is in good posture syndrome. Also involved in the vasculitis, especially the small vessel vasculitis. And most important is post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. And you are seeing hematuria is a major feature. And there is also membranocapillary glomerulonephritis. There is also IgA nephropathy. And in SLE, there may be features of nephritis as well as nephrotic and, and nephrotic presentation may be there. In case of the nephrotic uh, presentation, the mechanism is injury to the podocytes, changed architectural scarring, deposition of the matrix or other elements. And you are seeing the causes, that is minimal change nephropathy, focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, membranous nephropathy, amyloidosis, diabetic nephropathy. Here you are seeing proteinuria is a marked feature. Even in SLE, the main, main, uh, main presentation may be with nephrotic syndrome. So in this condition, you will get much more proteinuria where there is a nephrotic syndrome. But when the presentation is nephritic illness, you will get more hematuria. And in the urine, you will get RBC, RBC cast, granular cast. You will uh, find this presentation. So this spectrum is very uh, important. Now comes to the investigation. The primary investigation is the urine routine examination. What will you get? You will get, as I mentioned, that is RBC and red cell cast, also the granular cast, you will get it. And when you are doing the urine for protein examination, you will get either nephritic or nephrotic range proteinuria. And when you are do, doing the renal function test, that is the serum urea, urea creatinine will be elevated. And uh, to uh, look for the etiology, 
it will also do the culture of the throat swab discharge from the air swab from the inflamed skin then you can get nephrotogenic uh, strain of organism but uh, sometimes you may not get any organism you can also do the air so titer which is elevated in post streptococcal nephritis you can also do the c3 and c4 level that is maybe reduced and if you suspect secondary cause especially the autoimmune cause you can do the ana which will be um, present in significant titer in sle you can also do the anca that is it will it will positive in some vasculitis and you can do the anti glomerular basement membrane antibody which will be positive in good posture syndrome you can also do the cryoglobulins which is increased in cryoglobulinemia and in case of creatinine clearance if renal function is impaired clearance will be reduced and in chest x ray if it is a case of acute glomerulonephritis you can get the cardiomegaly and if there is a heart failure that is acute left ventricular failure you will get pulmonary evidence of pulmonary edema and in in renal imaging usually normal either x ray or sonology and in renal biopsy you can get glomerulopathy so these are the investigations among the most important investigations is routine urine examination renal function test cultures and accordingly according to the etiology you will advise for many other investigations now this is a summary of the primary glomerular disease say in 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 an arche you you will get this say if it is a case of minimal change disease which you will get more in case of children in children nephrotic syndrome most frequent clinical presentation is nephrotic syndrome what about the pathogenesis actually uh, exact uh, pathogenesis no, no, no. but there may be podocyte injury and in light microscopy it will be normal but in uh, fluorescent microscopy will be also be normal but in electronic microscopy you will get effacement of food process and no deposit here you will get no deposit of antigen antibody so these are the glomerular pathology if it is a case of membranous nephropathy you will get the features of nephrotic syndrome that is a uh, patient who uh, is present to it uh, generalized anasarca urine output will be uh, will be reduced uh, that is oliguria and in pathogenesis you will get some a complex formation uh, most of the primary disease pla 2r antigen is there and in light microscopy you will get diffuse capillary wall thickening and sub epithelial spike formation is there so you will uh, get this and in the fluorescent microscopy you will get granular igg and c3 along glomerular basement membrane and electron microscopy you will get sub epithelial deposit now in case of membrano proliferative glomerular nephritis type 1 patient may present with either nephritic illness or in nephrotic syndrome that is you will get the immuno immune complex that is antigen antibody uh, antibody deposition are there in light microscopy you will get the membrano proliferative pattern of a pattern and there is glomerular basement membrane splitting and in fluorescent microscopy you will get granular igg c3 c1 q and c4 along uh, glomerular basement membrane and mesenchyme and there is also subendothelial deposit so these findings uh, you will get it now um, most important Uh, uh nephritic illness is acute post infectious glomerular nephritis presentation is with nephritic syndrome that is patient will be there is oliguria pressure will be raised and there may be some complications resulting in say acute left ventricular failure acute uh, encephalopathy and others and uh, also creatinine will be raised 
and in case of immunocomplex, this is also immunocomplex mediating and uh, circulating uh, immune complex will be deposited. A light microscopy, you will get a diffuse endocapillary proliferation and there is a leukocyte infiltration. Endocapillary proliferation will be there in case of acute post-infectious myonephritis. And in case of fluorescent microscopy, you will get granular IgG and C3 along glomerular basement membrane and mesenzyme. And in case of electron microscopy, you will get primarily subepithelial harms. IgN aprobity is prevalent worldwide and it is the most common among the adults. And patient will present with nephritic illness, that is recurrent hematuria or proteinuria, and pathogenesis, that is immune complex containing the IgG. And in case of light microscopy, you will get mesangial or focal endocapillary proliferation, uh, proliferative glomerulonephritis. And in fluorescent microscopy, you will get IgA mainly, plus minus, you can get IgG, IgM, and C3 in mesangial. You will get it. And in case of electron microscopy, you will get mesangial and paramesangial dense deposit will be there. In case of good posture syndrome, syndrome uh, here actually type 2 immune reaction occurs. There is anti-GBM disease, that the glomerular basement membrane disease is there. And um, this, is, this is a very rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. And, and autoantibody against the collagen type 4, alpha 3 chain, against the glomerular basement membrane, as well as the in case of uh, that is a pulmonary system that is also the uh, against this uh, basement membrane also uh, so this uh, autoantibody actually occurs and there is the extra capillary proliferation with crescents and necrosis in light microscopy and in uh, fluorescent microscopy you will get linear igg and c3 fibrin in crescent you will get it and in electron microscopy, there is a no deposit, but glomerular basement membrane is disrupted, and there is also some fibrin deposition. So uh, you will get all the changes in uh, in these conditions. So now comes to the uh, post-infectious stratococcal glomerulonephritis. It is the most common cause of glomerulonephritis in children. It occurs when there is a pharyngeal or cutaneous attack of group A beta hemolytic streptococcus is there. And latent period of infection, in case of pharyngeal infection, it is about uh, one week, that is six to 10 days. And in case if there is any skin infection, that is same petigo, or there may be two weeks interval can be there. Commonly associated with poor hygiene, overcrowding, skin disease like scabies, that is infected scabies. In case of acute glomerulonephritis, it usually follows an infection with nephritogenic strain of group A beta hemolytic streptococci, the classical example of acute nephritic syndrome. Skin and throat infection with particular N M types of streptococci, that is nephritogenic strain, antidate glomerular disease, so in case of skin infection, M type 47, 49, 55, 2, 60, and 57 are seen following impetigo. But with pharyngitis or tonsillitis, you will get a strain, M type strain 1, 2, 4, 3, 25, 49. It is also important strain and 12 with uh, pharyngitis that is acute tonsillitis or any infective condition in the throat. Now you are seeing this picture, that is a streptococcal infection of the throat or the skin. This is impetigo, that is infected skin lesion. And you are seeing, that is the tonsillitis, used tonsillitis, infected tonsillitis. The post streptococcal glomerulonephritis due to impetigo develops two to six weeks after the skin infection and one to three weeks after estrotococcal pharyngitis. So you have to take the history, whether there is any history of sore throat, tonsillitis, infected tonsillitis, or there is an infected scabies or impetigo. 
and then you then you will correlate the incubation period now comes to the epidemiology of acute stratococcal glomerulonephritis that the peak incidence is 5 to 12 years uncommon in less than 3 years male is predominant to is to one and clinical course a spontaneous improvement or typically begins within one week and dissolution of the edema occurs usually 5 to 10 days and hypertension usually persists 3 to 4 weeks and usually proteinuria usually normalize within 4 to 6 weeks urine analysis may be abnormal persistent microscopic hematuria may be present up to one year so you should advise your patients especially in the children that these features may persist for up to one year that is urinary abnormality but clinical features usually resolve quickly and then comes when you will advise for renal biopsy severe acute renal failure requiring dialysis features suggesting non posterior infectious agent as the cause of acute nephritis that is absence absence of any latent period between streptococcal infection and acute glomerulonephritis normal sir exam join hote jacche sir hello sir exam join hote jacche sir oh, okay uh can i to show code chana okay normal complement levels initially in the early course and persistence of low c3 beyond 6 to 12 week if there is a you see that the c3 level is uh, is reduced but it persists uh, for say two weeks then you will also advise for renal biopsy and uh, if there is a delayed resolution say oliguria not improving um, uh, more than two weeks it is persisting that is azotemia that is uh, renal function test that is urea creatine persist for more than three weeks there is a gross hematuria persisted for more than three weeks and persistent proteinuria more than six months then you will advise for renal biopsy to uh, look for the underlying etiology now you see what will you will you get when you will do the renal biopsy in, in post streptococcus glomerulonephritis you are seeing that is hypercellularity of the mesenchymal and endothelial cells hypercellularity that is uh, this uh, the mesenchymal deposits and there is also endothelial cells will be proliferated and there is also sub endothelial deposits and granular infiltration of polymorphonuclear leukocytes and granular sub endothelial you are seeing here sub endothelial deposits of igg igm c3 c4 and c5 to c9 and sub epithelial deposits which appear as hum here you are seeing that is sub epithelial epithelial deposit and uh, it will uh, appear as a harm so these features you will get if you do a renal biopsy so these are the pictures of light microscopy and electron microscopy in post streptococcal glomerulonephritis in this post streptococcal glomerulonephritis you are seeing glomerular hypercellularity and you are seeing that is red blood cells in the tubule and when it passes in the urine it forms the rbc cast you will get it rbc cast and also there is a typical electron dense sub epithelial hump you will get it uh, sub epithelial hump you will get it and electron microscopy you will get uh, that is the uh, uh, you will showing the sub epithelial dense deposit sub epithelial dense deposit also you are uh, you are you are getting the condensation of the cytoskeleton in adjacent podocyte cytoplasm uh, condensation and you are also getting neutrophil um, uh, against the basement membrane there's a neutrophil deposition marginated against the basement membrane with the intervening endothelial cytoplasm so neutrophil also deposited in the endothelium so you are getting this now comes to the management of acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis you see actually 
main uh, uh, management is supportive that is you control the hypertension you if there is edema you will give the diuretics if patient is hypertensive you will give the antihypertensive and dialysis if needed uh, if dialysis if needed you will uh, if there is a acute features of azotemia then you will uh, advise for dialysis but you have to strictly monitor the intake output chart and also you have to measure the weight because if there is a fluid retention weight will be increased you also regularly you have to check the blood pressure um, and whether you have to adjust the dose of antihypertensive drug and if you see there is a some sore throat and there is an infection in the throat tonsillitis uh, then you have to you can advise for penicillin that is phenoxymethyl penicillin for 10 days to eliminate the beta hemolytic streptococcal infection and if penicillin is sensitive then you can give also the erythromycin and um, say if it is a case of infected scabies you can also um, give floxacillin then you can also uh, you can treat the scabies with either ivermectin or uh, or in the or on the other drugs diet in case of diet you have to measure the intake output chart that is fluid intake should be restricted that is output plus 500 cc or you can restrict it one liter no added salt to the diet and protein restriction is usually unnecessary and there is no immuno, uh, no role of immunosuppressive therapy uh, even in the settings of crescent so in case of acute glomerulonephritis post infection glomerulonephritis the treatment uh, is mainly supportive treatment and gradually the patient backs to normal um, but you have to address all these things that is hypertension should be controlled edema should be advised and if uh, the, uh, there is acute azotemia you can also advise for the dialysis so you have to also check, recheck the serum complement of six to eight weeks and annually you have to check the blood pressure renal function test and urine analysis every one to three months for one year then yearly so uh, uh, every one month first and then three month interval you have to check the urine examination is serum creatinine and you have to also check the blood pressure then after three months interval then at one year interval so this is also important for follow-up otherwise patient is clinically improving but biochemically and other things may not be improved so uh, patient may require some uh, measures at that particular time now comes to the prognosis what about the short-term outcome outcome is excellent mortality is less than 0.5 percent and in the long-term outcome uh, that is 1.8 percent of children develop chronic kidney disease so for that reason you have to follow up this patient uh, for uh, years together and complete usually there is a complete resolution within three to six weeks so there's a complete recovery in, in in case of children most of the cases usually resolve more than 95 percent of cases but in adult the uh, prognosis is not good is not much good like that of children that is only 60 percent of adult will uh, back to normal otherwise they may develop chronic glomerulonephritis and subsequently the uh, ckd now comes to the lupus nephritis lupus nephritis is a common and serious complication of systemic lupus erythematosa and more severe in african american female adolescent 30 to 50 percent patients will have clinical manifestation of renal disease at the time of diagnosis and 60 percent of adults and 80 percent of children develop renal abnormalities at some point and course of disease and it is said um, not only the 50 percent but most of the patient actually um, uh, in case in SLE the kidney is usually involved so you know the the features of systemic lupus erythematosus main features is uh, but uh, skin is skin there's a butterfly rash there may be discoid rash yes there may be mouth ulceration you can get it and in case of lungs 
you can get some fissure that is pleuritis, demonitis, pulmonary hemorrhage can occur. In case of heart, there may be endocarditis, atherosclerosis, inflammation of the fibrous sac. There may be severe abdominal pain. In case of blood, there may be anemia, high blood pressure, muscle and joint. That is, patient may present with arthralgia, arthritis. There may be uh, in the kidney involvement, you will get blood in the urine or in patient may present in nephrotic syndrome. There may be also hair loss, high fever, abnormal headache. So in case of systemic lupus erythematosus, it is actually a uh, criteria-based diagnosis. Say, if there is a, uh, say there is a butterfly rash or discoid rash, there is a involvement of the kidney, there may be involvement of hematological system, neurological system, and there may be a pleuro, uh, pleuro, uh, uh, say there is a pleuro, uh, pleurisy or there is a peritoneal involvement, uh, pleuropericarditis. These are also the features. And even some atypical uh, presentation may be there. Patient may present even in ITP. And the patient may present with simply nephrotic syndrome. So by investigation, you will uh, get SLE. And renal involvement is most important. And you are seeing this classification of the uh, lupus nephritis. It is very important. And there is a sixth classification. That is class one, minimal mesangial. Class 2, mesangial proliferation. Class 3, focal nephritis. Class 4, diffuse nephritis. Class 5, membranous nephritis. And class 6, sclerotic nephritis. <coughs> so, uh, in treatment response, actually up to 4-5 uh, is uh, responsive to treatment. Even we can, uh, you can give the pulse uh, cyclophosphamide. Uh, steroids and other Im immunosuppressive drug. Uh, in case of diffuse nephritis, you will get diffuse endocapillary or extracapillary proliferation with diffuse subendothelial immune deposits and messenger alteration. Messenger cell alteration, you will get it in case of diffuse nephritis. In membranous nephritis, thick and basement membrane with diffuse subepithelial immune deposits may occur with class 3 and class 4 lesion and is sometimes called mixed membranous and proliferative nephritis. Up to this, um, and these uh, patients are usually responsive to treatment, but if there is a sclerotic nephritis, that is global sclerosis of nearly all glomerular cap capillaries, treatment response is very poor. They may be supported by, uh, this patient usually develops the CKD, even in stage five, they, they, they may need renal replacement therapy. So these are the some pictures you are seeing that the minimal messenger immune deposits, you will, uh, you will uh, find it. And then uh, in case of class two lupus nephritis, that's messenger proliferation. Uh, 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 excellent um, uh, renal prognosis is excellent and need no therapy directed to the kidney. So there is also messenger proliferation in class two lupus nephritis. In class three nephritis, there's a focal nephritis. That is some uh, portion of the glomerular eye is usually involved. And uh, here treatment is short course, high dose corticosteroid therapy or a brief course of other immunosuppressive drug you can give. So uh, there's a focal nephritis, it is also responsive. and in class four, that is a global diffuse proliferative lesion. Treatment is by inducing remission with administration of high dose steroid and either cyclophosphamide or microphenolate mofetel for two to six months, followed by maintenance therapy with lower dose of the same. Even in maintenance therapy, we usually we can give the other therapy. So and this uh, 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 class four and class five is usually responsive. Thickening of the glomerular basement membrane with subepithelial deposit you, you are getting here, and treatment uh, therapy with inhibitors of uh, AC inhibitors and also other uh, immunosuppressive drugs. But in case of uh, lupus nephritis class 6, it is advanced sclerosing lupus nephritis or end stage lupus nephritis, nephritis is desired for biopsies. 
with more than 90% of the glomerular sclerosis and there is no residual activity. So this patient usually do not respond to any type of treatment. As I already mentioned, it progresses to actually CKD and you have to manage accordingly. Now comes to the another important uh, important glomerulonephritis that is IgA nephropathy. It is the most common form of glomerulonephritis worldwide in adults. IgA nephropathy characterized by messenger deposition of IgA containing immune complex. Recurrent asymptomatic hematuria is the most common clinical presentation. So you note this one. That is the recurrent asymptomatic hematuria is the most common clinical presentation in IgA nephropathy. It commonly affects children and young adults in a variable course. So this is the most common. So you are seeing light microscopy in IgA nephropathy. That is um, messenger deposit and messenger cell proliferation and there is also deposits in IgA nephropathy. In light microscopy of a glomeruli with features of immunoglobulin A nephropathy showing segmental messenger matrix expansion and hypercellularity, hypercellularity and then addition of Bowman's capsule. So there's also addition of the Bowman's capsule. So an electron microscopy and immunofluorescence in IgA nephropathy. You are seeing these are the changes that occurs in immunofluorescence. Uh, you, you will get the IgA, IgA deposit, and also you will, and that is the ultrastructural features of immunoglobulin A nephropathy. That is the messenger dense deposit. Messenger here you are getting that dense deposit and messenger hypercellularity you are getting here. So these are the changes you will get it. What about the course? A close to an increased risk of progression, loss of renal function. If uh, onset is in the old days, heavy proteinuria, hypertension, hypertension, extent of glomerulosclerosis on biopsy, absence of episodes of macroscopic hematuria and male, they usually progress to chronicity. The hematuria typically lasts for several days and then subsides only to return every few months. The subsequent course is highly variable. Many patients maintain normal renal function for decades. So in case of uh, this IgA nephropathy occurs in all age group and in case of children and young, young adults, the prognosis is more or less good. But if the onset is old age, there is a heavy proteinuria on the onset if patient presents with hypertension and if there is a extensive uh, glomerular sclerosis in biopsy and if there is a uh, absence of episodes of macroscopic hematuria and if patient is main, they usually uh, uh, runs for chronicity. So this is very uh, important note you have to uh, you have to careful. What about the prognosis? IgA nephropathy is a benign disease for the majority of patients. 5 to 30 percent of patients may go into a complete remission with others having hematuria but well preserved renal function. In the minority of patients who have prog uh, progressive disease, progression is slow with renal failure seen in only 25 to 30 percent of patients with IgA nephropathy over a period of 20 to 25 years. So progression is slow, but in 30% of cases, they may progress slowly over a period. So you have to follow up this patient uh, after a certain interval. And what about the uh, treatment option? It is the AC, that is angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor in patients with proteinuria or declining renal function. When presenting, we are presenting as rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, Patient typically receive, then you have to treat with a steroid and cytotoxic drug. Now comes to the uh, good posture syndrome, that is anti glomerular basement membrane disease. Patients who develop autoantibodies directed against the glomerular basement antigen frequently develop glomerulonephritis and termed as anti glomerular basement membrane 
antibody disease. When they present with lung hemorrhage and glomerulonephritis, they have a pulmonary renal syndrome called the good posture syndrome. The target epitopes for this autoimmune disease lie in the quaternary structure of A3 uh, and C1 domain of plasmid 4. So these antibodies, these autoantibodies, usually develops against the basement membrane of the kidney as well as in the lung. So it is actually a type 2 uh, autoimmune reaction. Now comes to the good posture syndrome. Good posture syndrome appears in two age group, in young men in their late 20s and in men and women in their 60s and 70s. Disease in the younger age group is usually explosive with hemoptysis and sudden fall of hemoglobin. There is also fever, breathlessness and hematuria. Presentation with oliguria is often associated with a particularly uh, bad outcome or outcome if it presents with oliguria. Now these are the features you will get on renal biopsy. The performance of an urgent kidney biopsy is important in suspected case to confirm your diagnosis and to assess the prognosis. In renal biopsy, you will get focal or segmental necrosis with aggressive destruction of the capillaries by cellular proliferation leads to crescent formation in Bowman's space. So it will some, there is also some crescent, uh, uh, crescent formation from the basement membrane. As this lesion progresses, there is a concomitant interstitial nephritis with fibrosis and tubular atrophy can occur. Now comes to the unca associated small vessel disease. Uh, you can get uh, you. Uh, these are the uh, these are the uh, uh, conditions. That is granulomatosis with polyangiitis, microscopic polyangiitis, and shark Strauss syndrome. You can uh, uh, these three diseases associated with uh, small vessel vasculitis. Then granulomatosis with polyangiitis. Clinical features is usually fever, rhinuria, nasal ulcer, polyarthralgia or arthritis, cough, hemoptysis, shortness of breath, microscopic hematuria, and proteinuria can be there. In case, if you do a chest X-ray, it will reveal nodules and persistent infiltrate, sometimes with cavity. And biopsy of involved tissue will show a small vessel vasculitis and adjacent non casating granuloma, you can get it. And now comes to the Weissner's granulomatosis. Actually, it is a medium vessel vasculitis. There is ulceration, oral ulceration uh, through the oral mucosa, even uh, uh, other, uh, that is the, in case of lungs, there, is, there, there may cavities are there, and there may be bleeding. Sometimes it may confuse with tuberculosis. In the skin, there may be nodule on the elbow and granuloma and patchy necrosis in blood vessels. You will can get it. And in eye, you can get the pseudotumors, conjunctivitis, nose, there is, there is a sudden nose, that is no, there is a bleeding, the epistaxis, the stuffiness is there, there may be pericarditis, there may be glomerulonephritis, and you will get ANCA positive, that is anti neutrophil cytoplasmic test will be positive. And in case, uh, what about the management principle? Uh, with polyangiitis, granulomatosis to polyangiitis. Uh, induction of remission is usually done by CD19 inhibitor, that is rituximab plus prednisolone, cyclophosphamide or cyclophosphamide and prednisolone. Maintenance of remission is usually azathioprine, methotrexate or rituximab you can give. So this is a very severe condition. In case of microscopic polyangiitis, Clinically, this patient looks sometimes similar to those with granulomatosis with polyangiitis, except they rarely have significant lung disease or destructive sinusitis. You can also get this destructive sinusitis and lung disease in Wiesner's granulomatosis. The distinction is made on biopsy, where the vasculitis in microscopic polyangiitis is without granuloma. Some patients will also have injury limited to the capillaries and venules. 
So, uh, in case of microsomy polyangiitis, easy to diagnose and treat if you think of it. So, a high degree of suspicion is important. A small veins and artery shows patchy three layer in inflammation is there. So, features are usually there is a vague aches and pains, hemoptysis and inflammation is there. Patient may present with a stroke, heart attack, bowel infarct, nephrotic or kidney failure is there. There may be gangrene and peripheral nerve damage, there may be also hematuria. And if you do the ANCA, ANCA will be, free ANCA will be positive. Management, five-year survival rate for patient with treated microscopy polyangiitis is 74%. Treatment is same as granulomatosis with polyangiitis. Life-threatening disease should be treated with the combination of prednisolone and daily sacrophosphamide or rituximab. Now comes to the Chagas syndrome. A small vessel vasculitis is associated with peripheral eosinophilia, cutaneous purpura, mononeuritis, asthma, allergic rhinitis, lung inflammation, including fetting cough and pulmonary infiltrates are common. Renal biopsy shows a small vessel vasculitis and focal segmental necrotizing glomerulonephritis. As said, this condition may even um, may present with, say, this COVID-19 situation. This can occur. That is the features of, uh, say, lung involvement, also the, uh, uh, also the joint involvement, also the renal involvement can be there uh, due to a small vessels vasculitis. So management of the Chagas syndrome, the prognosis of Untreated, Chagas syndrome is poor with a reported five year survival only 25%. Glucocorticoid alone appears to be effective in many patients. In patients who present with fulminant multi system disease, particularly cardiac involvement, the treatment of choice is a combination, a combination uh, uh, with cyclophosphamide and prednisolone, followed by azathioprine or methotrexate. Mepulogimab is a FDA approval for the treatment of severe isonephilic asthma and may particularly have a role in the setting of relapsing resistant asthma in isonephilic granulomatosis. And uh, that is uh, mesangio capillary glomerulonephritis or lower pneumonia. Mesangio glomerulonephritis, it is an immune mediated glomerulonephritis characterized by thickening of the glomerular basement membrane and messenger proliferative changes. That is changes in the messenger with proliferation of the cells. There are types of messenger proliferative glomerulonephritis. That is either granular immunofluorescent staining for immunoglobulin and C3, immuno, immune complex messenger, uh, messenger proliferative glomerulonephritis, either evidence for nephrotogenic infection, say hepatitis C virus, that is infectious messenger proliferative glomerulonephritis. If there is evidence of autoimmune disease, that is cryoglobinemia, autoimmune causes. If glomerular monoclonal immunoglobulin by immunofluorescence, monoclonal messenger proliferative glomerulonephritis. If granular immunofluorescence staining for C3 with little or no immunoglobulin, that is alternative complement pathway dysregulation, C3 glomerulopathy. That is intravenous, intramembranous, glomerular basement membrane dense deposit. Then dense deposit disease is there. And no intramembranous glomerular basement membrane dense deposit by electron microscopy, C3 uh, glomerular nephritis may there. So these are the pictures uh, you can, in light microscopy or APO section, you will get it, get this. That is sub endothelial deposit, you will get it interposed messenger cell messenger cell process is there intermembranous deposits are there and that is um, these features you will get it so this is all about glomerulonephritis so uh, if you have any questions regarding this presentation um, you can uh, you can ask if there is any question you can ask so this is all about